Gentry frying in the melting pot, my mouth a mercury lake, I baptized John Baptiste in a barn fire. I am Windy City of red meat, stockyards of men in factories inside my belly, a jungle of segregated joints. Rub my navy pores with the blood of better dying boys, making steel and stealing it. I am Windy City of Cabrini Green Giants. Hear my Newport throat croak an eight hour workday, a haymarket rally in the projects, pipe bomb at Pullman's Pied Piper. I work for no one. Hey y'all, what up? Uh, my name is Freddie Williams. Graduated from Brooks back in 2015. Uh, and then I took off to Morehouse College, Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, graduated 2019. Hi, my name is Shantia Morgan. I am alumni from Gwendolyn Brooks, class of 2011. I graduated from the illustrious Tennessee State University in 2015. Hello all, my name is Ryan Jones. I'm a proud class 2013 graduate from Gwendolyn Brooks, and I'm currently a master's student candidate for nonprofit management at Columbia University. Uh, but we are here to talk about my HBCU, uh, which was the Alabama State University, which is located in Montgomery, Alabama. My name is Lanisha Haynes, also known as Dr. Lily. I'm a former graduate of Gwendolyn Brooks College Preparatory Academy. Go Eagles! Uh, I graduated from there in 2009. I'm currently a dentist here in New Orleans, Louisiana, and I want to tell you a little bit about why to go to HBCU. I'll just give y'all the reasons why I went to HBCU and the reason you should too, is because you just get to be around like so many black people, uh, beautiful black people, smart, and then the classes are all tailored to like black people. Like it's from our perspective. I feel like the classes, the teachers, I mean, the environment is just really good for you to grow and become who you like, who you want to become. Anything you want to do, they have it out there for you. Um, going to a HBCU really taught me to truly love and embrace my blackness. Like, literally, it may sound cliche, but it taught me black power for real. Um, it taught me the importance of unity, um, up upholding our cultural values. And really just supporting one another and like literally like practicing love to love one another and not be hateful or jealous or spiteful. Um, one of the main reasons I attended Alabama State was because I was fortunate enough to receive a full ride um, from a scholarship conference that they had while they were in Chicago or were a part of while they were in Chicago. Um, and I can say the my experience at Alabama State helped me grow as a person, uh, especially confidence wise. While I was in high school, I wasn't the most outspoken or uh, outgoing person. Uh, but when I got to college, it, it was either, you know, become a part of just a regular student or actually step up to become, a, you know, a leader, which is what you want to be at any time, um, especially at HBCU. Because um, those connections can take you a long way, especially when you go into a professional field. I, for one, went to the uh, Xavier University of Louisiana in New Orleans. A uh, few reasons I went there. I uh, went on a few college tours. Um, and as soon as I got to Xavier, I felt at home. Um, I had been on some other college tours at Howard, Hampton. I even went to UIC and University of Michigan. And I just didn't feel at home. The alumni, you'll meet a lot of alumni out there who are willing to help you who are in the different fields that you want to go into. 
and they'll be there to help all you gotta do is reach out connect with somebody home comments connect with somebody and it's it's really open it's really that cool it's really that easy i would not change my decision for anything in the world granted it was like ups and downs of course but that was the best decision i could have ever made a lot of folks do uh talk about how it's a sense of family but I don't think they stress the extent of how much uh, of a family at HBCU is. My neighbor at the time was graduating from there with a degree in pharmacy, and my cousin was off to medical school. Um, Xavier is a great school. I recommend going to HBCUs. Uh, my little sister also goes to HBCU. She goes to Howard and will be graduating from there this year as a double major with political science and French. The caring professors and faculty, like no matter what, profession what you want to go in you got people there who really care about you really want to see you succeed and they're there to help you so yeah those are my top however many reasons why i went to hbcu and as far as like professors i had really really great relationships with my professors um they actually a few of them uh wrote my recommendation letter to get into uh, grad school and even the uh, asu president he um, wrote me a recommendation letter so my family it has a lot of uh hbcu pride and i'm trying to instill that in some of you eagles all right later love you miss david peace black colleges were redefining what it meant to be black in america you were pursuing a career where intellect mattered an educated black population could not be an enslaved black population. We want black power. If you weren't out there demonstrating, then something had to be wrong with your school. We wanted freedom now. But whites were not prepared for any changes here. I think they should be kept out any way possible. A slaveholder could work a slave to death. He could rape a slave. He could do virtually anything, but teach a slave how to read or write. As soon as the war breaks out, the first thing they want is to get an education. They wanted those schools to be as free as possible from paternalism, from racism, whether subtle or blatant. Said you better let my Movements are easily birthed on HBCU's campuses. We must love and protect each other. We're all going through the same experience. HBCU is somewhere where I can be completely myself. The black college experience provides the place to be in the majority. That is such a unique and empowering experience. This HBCU experience has taught me that anything is possible as long as you have that one spark. Geared for war. Like many other American colleges, Tuskegee Institute in Alabama has been graduating qualified flyers for some time. The United States Army Air Forces stationed at Tuskegee's fields hold classes on the campus to teach the fundamentals of ground school. Tuskegee shops prepare students for jobs in aviation plants. The work of Dr. Carver is well known. While at Tuskegee, he has contributed much to the science of nutrition and is now using his talents and his knowledge in the war effort. Other Tuskegee scientists are also working to improve diets at home. Using an improved process, these scientists get more alcohol from the plentiful sweet potato than ever before. Many courses, like this automotive maintenance class, are given to women who learn to fill jobs vacated by men gone to war. Prairie View, one of the state colleges of Texas, is designing courses to supply trained men and women to the increasingly technical fields of industrial and military service. In the agriculture department, students study the operation and maintenance of farm equipment methods of increasing important farm products and the study of animal husbandry are part of this program. A forging class learns how to make machine parts and tools so difficult to get in wartime. Many will get jobs in war plants. Well-equipped machine shops in the mechanical department 
teach these young men how to make the materials so vital in our war effort today. The demand for trained specialists is increasing. Jobs are opening in all parts of the country, and these college departments help to meet the shortage of manpower. Colleges everywhere are adding new courses for war training and are putting new emphasis on old ones. For example, here at Howard University, located in Washington, D.C., this class in mechanical designing trains men and women for jobs in the plants that make our tanks, guns, and machines. This meteorology class teaches future flyers celestial navigation, the science that guides our planes to their objectives and safely home again. Many laboratories are now specializing on war materials, and classes like this teach students the chemistry of powder and explosives to train them for positions in munition plants. Testing machines try the explosive force of new powders. Howard University Medical School has speeded up training to furnish doctors and nurses for the fighting forces. One of the country's leading authorities on blood plasma shows students how to determine the gravity of plasma to be used in the war zones. In the College of Liberal Arts, this class studies the economics of war. Many graduates fill jobs in the accounting departments of war plants and government agencies. Hampton Institute, located on the banks of Hampton Roads, Virginia, is practically on a 24-hour basis, training hundreds of war workers. The president's home was an old plantation house. Here, one of the country's great educators welcomes foreign students who are sent to learn American customs and culture. Students studying building construction and architecture built most of the buildings on Hampton campus. y'all may know and in the fall i plan on attending hbcu preferably clark Atlanta. um i plan on going to one because i think it's very important to be around my culture and especially with everything going on right now i think it's really important to just you know have that stability um and be as safe as possible um, i've always known i wanted to attend hbcu school um, i'm stuck between howard spelman and clark right now i'll be attending these schools on a sociology major with I think I want to minor in journalism and then I also want to be on a pre-law course because I aim to be a lawyer in the future. Hi my name is Gabrielle Hill and I'm really excited to be attending an HBCU in the fall of 2021 and I'm excited because I think HBCUs have such a strong support system like the professors and the admissions staff really want to see you succeed there. Hi um, I'm Amari Stewart and I'll be attending an HBCU this upcoming fall and I'm excited to see the many forms in which black excellence loves to show itself. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Kristen. In the fall of 2021, I will be attending an HBCU. I am so excited for this experience to be diverse as well as inclusive community that also celebrates black culture. We live in a society where there's often the stigma of uneducated African-American males. That's often the prevailing sort of narrative in the nation. Me and most of my cousins are in college right now and I wanted to just expound on that and go a place where I can be surrounded by like-minded people. That could sort of encourage me to succeed and rise along with them. An HBCU is not just for uh, African Americans. It is for the, the underlying theme that anybody who is welcome should go to an HBCU. Every shoe doesn't fit every person, so it would make sense to find a shoe that fits you best. I don't mean to sound cliche, but I like being around my people. I just wanted to experience something different from uh, my hometown. I'm from Boston, Massachusetts. I went to an all-white high school and it was kind of being the outcast. I come from California where most of the public school systems are like 70% white and Asian. I cried my first day. I cried in the car and I called my mom. I told her I couldn't do it. 
But once I got there and I sat in the classroom and I saw students raise their hand and who weren't afraid to answer questions like I was in high school, it opened my eyes. So I decided to go to HBCU to kind of experience more of the black culture that I felt that I didn't get. I knew that attending an HBCU would better aid in my goal of disseminating knowledge throughout um, the African American community. I think it's cool too, because I go to HBCU, but I'm a Latino man, so. <laughs> they had experiences that I never had, and I had experiences that I could share, and we just, we bonded that way. I went to like a predominantly white school, and I lived in a small town, so just learning more about about me, myself, and my image was my main goal. It's very important to know where you came from. Being a part of majority is underrated. My HBCU is full of very rich history. You meet people there that have history, that have substance behind them. We have our own system we can set up and serve our own people for our own benefits and education. It's more of a historical and personal point of education. It's really been a lot more about understanding myself as a person and less about, you know, being black or being this and being that. It's okay, this is who you are in this world. This is how you're viewed and this is how you could make a change upon it. Now it's about who are you authentically. For a lot of us, it's like our first time away from home. The support that you gain from HBCU um, is truly unparalleled. I didn't want to be just another number. I have gotten a lot more hands-on experience and the teachers are a lot more willing to work with you. You can walk down the street, know each other. So it's not just a relationship with the classmate, it's a relationship where you all are friends or associates and it extends outside of the classroom. And it's not the family like your blood family that you grew up with, but it's this other family that you kind of um, have and it's, it's really great because you know family is important. Our campus is, what, 3,000 students? including commuters. So the class sizes are probably 20, 20 students. So the environment is intimate with sufficient wiggle room. Everybody really bonds and clicks together. People are pushed. They push each other. They push each other to succeed. They teach me how to respect myself. Like when I see alumni coming back and they teach me how to respect my HBCU as well and my roots. To be able to sit down with a professor and not just feel rushed. Everything I wrote, she double and triple marked through with red and kind of, at the time I felt like she was tearing my papers apart. But now when I look at my writing compared to the writing that I did. That's what college is, if you're gonna live your life and you're gonna travel and you're gonna do all the fun and the cool stuff and the crazy stuff and the stupid stuff and the smart stuff. You know, this is the time to do it. I mean, it's the best decision I ever made. I, I left 900 miles away from my friends and family and started a brand new journey and it's been amazing for me. Hello, my name is Joseph Porter. I'll be attending the HBCU. Uh, most likely gonna be FAMU. Uh, HBCU is to bring along black culture. College that I picked, it also helps with my major is one of the top biological studies, science studies, colleges, United States. So it's going to help me get to where I need to go.
For those who don't know me, I'm Yashara, and I'm currently the captain of the Divine Diamond Sands team. In celebration of Black History Month in this year's theme, I've had the pleasure of learning so much about the dance life at North Carolina a and They offer minors and majors in dance study and technique, not only involving contemporary styles, but forms that reflect the experiences of many of our ancestors. Hey y'all, it's the Maya and the new co-captain of the Divine Diamonds. The HBCU that I decided to do was Howard. Howard has two amazing dance teams, one of which even escorted our vice president during the inauguration parade. But the team I decided to focus on is the Bisonettes because they relate more to the Divine Diamond. The Bisonettes were founded in 1992 by LaShawn Dodds, an undergraduate student from the south side of Chicago. They are an all-style dance team that do several of performances for school events, games, and competitions. First off, I would like to say Happy Black History Month. I'm Casey, and I'm a member of Divine Diamond's dance team, as well as one of our exercise leaders. And today, I will be informing you about Spelman's dance team called Mahogany in Motion. Mahogany in Motion was founded in 1990 by a former Jackson State Gisette named Piper Williams, who was asked to establish a dance team for Morehouse College. Mahogany in Motion was created with 14 original members and was envisioned to be a premier dance team, which consisted of jazz and ballet techniques and also a personal charisma of their own. My hey guys, my name is Ari from the Divine Diamonds Dance Team, and in honor of Black History Month, today I'll be telling you about the Prancing J sets from the HBCU Jackson State University. Prancing J sets were founded in 1971 by Shirley Middleton Blakely at JSU in Jackson, Mississippi. Blakely was a formal trained ballet dancer and established technical performance standards as well as academic and personal behavior standards for her dancers. Hi, my name is Chloe. I am a member on the Divine Diamonds dance team. The HBCU dance team that I'll be giving you information about is the Ebony Fire dance team from Hampton University. Hampton University is a private HBCU that is located in Hampton, Virginia that was founded April 1st, 1868. The Abani Fire Dance Team was founded in 1983. They do all types of style of dance, major at drilling, etc. The Abani Fire Dance Team performed at the 2019 Chicago Football Classic against Howard University. Hey guys, and happy Black History Month. My name is Naya, a member of the Divine Diamonds Dance Team, and today I'll be giving you facts and information on Alcorn State University's majorette team, the Golden Girls. Alcorn State University is the oldest public historically black land grant institution in the United States and the second oldest state supported institution of higher learning in Mississippi. The Golden Girls aka GGs were founded in 1968 by Samuel Griffin. There were eight original Golden Girls and in the fall of 1968 the Golden Girls made their national debut in Miami, Florida during the Orange Blossom Classic. During this time, no one had ever seen a female dance team perform during halftime. Hey y'all, I'm Anaya, a member of the Divine Diamonds Dance Team, and I will be telling y'all about the Venom Dancers of the HBCU FAMU. The Venom Dancers are one of the many spirited and amusing teams on FAMU's campus. They were founded in 1994 by eight amazing ladies. The Venom Squad incorporates many styles of dancing, such as hip-hop, majorette, lyrical, and so much more. What's up, you guys? Happy Black History Month. My name is Miranda, and I'm a member of the Divine Diamond Dance Team. And today, I'll be providing you guys with important facts and information about the Sensational Stingettes Dance Team of Alabama State University. The Stingettes are a part of Alabama State University's Mighty Marching Hornets Band and have been entertaining Montgomery, Alabama since 1977. In 2015, the Alabama State Stingettes starred on a reality television show named Bama State Style. The show had five episodes and filmed constantly throughout the season. Hi guys, it's Mamaya, and I am another member of the Divine Diamond. The HBCU team that I've decided to highlight is the Southern University Fabulous Dancing Dolls. The dolls were founded by the original Southern girl herself, Miss Gracie Perkins, who is a native to Baton Rouge, Louisiana in the year 1969 and has been in the game for 50 plus years. The team is recognized for their poise, class, precision, smooth yet sassy dance style, down to their eye-catching strut, and even their intriguing field shows. As the team became popular over the years, they have been asked to dance on broader stages. So blessed to be 
You will be told that this is not a problem, not your problem. You will be told that now is not the time for change to begin, told that we cannot win. But the point of protest isn't winning, it's holding fast to the promise of freedom, even when fast victory is not promised, meaning we cannot stand up to police if we cannot cease policing our own imagination, convincing our communities that this won't work before the work has even begun, that this can wait when we've already waited out a thousand suns. By now, we understand that white supremacy and the despair it demands are as destructive as any disease. So when you're told that your rage is reactionary, remember that rage is our right. It teaches us it is time to fight in the face of injustice. Not only is anger natural, but necessary because it helps carry us to our destination. Our goal has never been revenge, just restoration, not dominance, just dignity, not fear, just freedom, just justice. Facing the rising sun of a new day begun, let us march on till victory is won.